Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. In this video, I'm going to talk about and majorly this is going to be the video where I'm going to mostly talk about and there is no uh, kind of demo to show you, but at least I will walk you through the steps which we can take, right? And what I'm talking all about is the uh, capability for cross-tenant SharePoint migration, right? So this is in preview mode currently, right? And this is also applicable, not only applicable, but any organization who have enterprise agreement subscription or tenant, they would be able to simply use this capability with a right set of licenses, right? And this capability is very helpful in order to migrate from one SharePoint tenant to another SharePoint tenant, right? And this is going to be helping organizations to use this capability to migrate from one to another, right? So in that case, there won't be need of utilization or need of any other tools and systems, but this capability is baked in and built in to perform these kind of migration activities, right? So this is in preview currently, and definitely this is going to be available for uh, general availability or is going to be available for customers upon testing and different requirements right and based on that is going to be available for the organizations in general right so i'll simply share my screen and i'll you i'll walk you through right how it is going to be and what is needed and how it is going to be right so here you can see that i have opened this up over here right, which is across chain SharePoint migration. And you can see it's in preview currently. That means there are many uh, different capabilities, different testings that are yet to happen. And still Microsoft is testing it. Now Microsoft is asking their customers as well as different partners and whoever wants to be part of this project, basically they can be joining us or joining the Microsoft, right? And then they can simply test these capabilities, right? And there are certain requirements as well. So this whole document is going to be giving us as a customer a clarity. And then upon that, we should be able to understand and use it, right? So here is the option how to participate, right? So for the cross tenant user content migration feature capability and the licenses and you can see this is currently only available for enterprise agreement customers. So maybe this is going to be available for all the customers going forward, but currently it is only for enterprise agreement customers, right? And basis on that, for those customers who have enterprise agreement, they can simply sign up by opening up this page and then they can also learn more about each of these capabilities where prerequisites and settings are mentioned, right? Where we can simply install Power Sales module for SharePoint Online and then bring it on to be able to set and make it ready, right? So this is the complete page or the form where we can fill it out and then it's going to help us to do that. And this is, more over into you can see there are different questions and different requirements that they are asking for and from let's say starting from name organization choose the industry which industry you are in email address then preview provide your tenant details like uh, vanity domain right and based on that they are going to help or identify your domain and then preview related secure document workflows with syntax is signature if there are any right and then other options are available over here as well which is preview relating to or sharing controls in sam which is syntax sharepoint advanced management add-on skus right and then preview related to advanced site lifecycle management in sam with add-on skus as well so basis on that every organization is going to be not every, but at least those organizations who have enterprise agreement initially. And once this becomes generally generally available for all the customers, that means this is going to be easy for everyone to use. But at least 
to start with those enterprise agreement customers and organizations can go ahead and fill this form and be part of this one and they can try and test capabilities and utilize it right so this is how it is going to be right let's go back to the main page here you see steps one two three four five and six and there's a seven as well so there are steps mentioned on each step we have to perform certain actions to be able to be ready for migration as well as we have some of the configurations that we need to do right so there is a configuration to start with connect to the tenants then establishing a trust between both the tenants right and verify the trust between both tenants right upon that we should be able to pre-create users and groups those would be part of migration and then prepare the identity mapping which is going to be source and target tenant right and basis on that once everything is ready we should be good to go ahead and start the cross tenant set point migration right and upon that once the migration is ready or once the migration has successfully done or completed right we have a step which is post migration step as well so we can go ahead and do that as well right and this document has outlined everything to know what is allowed, what is not allowed, what it is going to do, what are the scenarios where this SharePoint or cross tenant SharePoint migration capability is going to really be really helpful, right? And based on that, we should be able to understand and take the appropriate actions, right? Now, there could be a question whether this is going to help me in my situations because each organization is unique and different and they might have different requirements to do. So that may not be supportable in this one. So that is something which we as a customer need to understand and do the thoroughly assessment and understand what this capability can help and do for us and for our organization's requirements, right? So that's also very important to know and understand. And basis on that, the next steps can be taken appropriately and uh, taken the appropriate steps for the migration at will, right? So from the requisite settings, then the target site and group connecting or connected sites, and you would see important messages on pages, on each of these pages along with uh, notes as well. So those are the uh, very important details that we should go with and understand what is exactly available there how it can help us, are there any limitations, what are the advantages there, what are the disadvantages there, because this is something everyone and each organization should understand and know because they have different and unique requirements. That means they may not be, uh, or they may not have appropriate requirements or those requirements are not met by this solution uh, at this moment, right? So that could be the future requirements as well. So basis on that, each and every organizations can assess the requirements and this tool capability, basically. Right, so based on that, we can go ahead and take the next steps, right? So I'm not going to go all the details here because it's very important to go through and understand, right? When we are going to take and try to utilize this capability of cross and SharePoint migration. But in this video, I'm going to walk you through what are those steps. So here are those steps. You can see connect to source and target tenants, right? Which is of course the first step. The second is establishing trust between source and target tenants. Third is verify trust has been established successfully. Fourth is pre-create users and groups. That is the pre-creation user and groups mapping. Prepare identity mapping. That is also very important to make sure identities are mapped and then start the cross tenant SharePoint migration. And the last one is post migration steps that we can go ahead and take one by one, right? So on the every step, you would see there are certain steps that we need to do in order, to us, in order for us to go ahead and start the migration, right? So each of those steps are having appropriate details that we should do starting from connecting SharePoint sites or SharePoint environment from source to target and then establish the trust between both together. 
right? And then once that is done, we should be ready with mapping and verifying and mapping and then should be ready to start the migration, right? So this is how it is going to be and allowing us to perform. And now it is also good for any organizations who wanted to test this capability when they have mergers and acquisition scenarios, right? Those are the scenarios where where organization wants to consolidate their data and SharePoint environments together instead of keeping two environments separately because there are not many things when people want to access something from there and something is in here. So there are different tenants, different locations, and that's big, that becomes difficult for users to access and be collaborative on different works and projects and things around it, right? So that is why merges and acquisitions is the one of those scenarios where this tooling and this capability is going to be really helpful, right? And there would be many other, but depending on the organizations, how they wanted to go ahead and use this capability for their requirements, right? So you would see there are certain steps given here and how you can create and map users and groups and prepare the identity mapping file and how you can map those. So this document has all the steps given and you can simply go ahead and map it appropriately and do that, right? And currently I don't have that one. That is why I won't be able to show you directly a practical demo on this one, but uh, definitely upon going through this document, you would simply understand and you would be able to do that, right? Without any hiccups there. And this way it is going to be helpful to make sure uh, we as a customer are mapping and doing things correctly. The sixth step is to start the on-drive cross-tenant migration. Right and oh, okay, I think this is on drive. Okay, so we not this one. So we are talking about the SharePoint one, right? So SharePoint site cross tenant migration, right? As it's in preview mode currently, that means there would be different changes that Microsoft and respective team who is actually working on this feature building they would or there would be different changes happening and those would not be notified by the customers and users who ever actually using this for their different requirements and projects right so those changes would come up until and unless this features and capability does not become generally available right and once this is ga generally available that means the product is matured enough to go ahead and use for each and every customers and the once as this product in preview now, that means the changes keep happening and Microsoft is going to try and test different capabilities and features and services. And then they would go ahead and take the appropriate actions, right? To build this product stronger than uh, in the previous step, maybe the project or the features are built, but they need to make it more stronger to be able to handle the great workload and the performance efficiency and everything because at the same time, the same service is going to utilize underlying infrastructure, right? And that is why they need to, or they would keep working and make sure this product is working as expected, stronger enough and is ready to handle the big chunk of workloads as well, right? So this way it is going to be worked upon and developed and uh, make ready for customers once once it is done then it is ready for the migrations and the last step here is post migration steps you would see notes over here as well and then you can see removing trust relationship on the last step and here it shows the removing redirect links post migration so how it is going to be happening and what are the redirections and permissions and sharing links and SharePoint sites, right? So how it is going to work exactly. So you can understand all of that on each of those steps given one by one, right? 
So based on that, you can take the appropriate actions and learn and understand this one. And I would encourage you to go through this whole document and all these steps and understand it. And probably if you have the enterprise agreement with Microsoft, then definitely you can go ahead and try and test it and be a part of this program with Microsoft so that you would understand no more about this capability and helpful for maybe future projects and requirements, right? So yeah, that is what I wanted to show you and talk about this for now. And hope you like it. Hope you learned something new. Do let me know if you have any questions, any doubts, anything that you wanted to clarify. And I would be happy to answer those and happy to collaborate on anything that you wanted to as well, right? So yeah, don't forget to like this video, share it to your friends, people around you as well, and subscribe to the channel as well so that you get to see every new video whenever it is uploaded and available on the channel. So yeah, that's all. Thanks for watching and bye for now.